And we are back on professional wrestling with Jonathan and Timur. We function as real estate lawyers by day, and we speak about wrestling at night. Timur, welcome back to Professional Wrestling, the podcast. Thank you, Jonathan, for the intro. Uh, glad to be back. Lots of big items uh, took place in the uh, wrestling universe since we last um, had me as a guest on the podcast, right? Lots to catch up on, I think, um, before we kind of get into um, the topics of what's going on in wrestling. I think um, we have to mention the passing of the Iron Sheik, legend, legendary heel character, right? Absolutely. I just mentioned him on the Chosen Life podcast the other day, and uh, we lost an icon. Uh, I grew up with the Iron Sheik and, you know, the politically incorrect days of life and wrestling as it was. Tamur, this character would never exist in this day and age, the way in his current, in his format, but uh, he was a lot of fun and a uh, very outspoken guy. And you know what? He lived a full life. One of the things that uh, my co-host uh, said was, you know, he still lived a pretty decent life. Like a lot of guys die pretty young between 30 and 50 in wrestling for various causes. You know, he didn't have the best of health, but uh, Iron Sheik was definitely one of the great ones. Yeah, one of the sort of um, last, um, I guess, well, not anymore, but like one of the last, well, he was one of the last remaining legends of, you know, the golden age of WWE, you could say, right? From the early to mid 80s, um, a little before, a bit before my time. But, you know, definitely... Um, when you think of, you know, iconic heel characters, very few can top the Iron Sheik, right? And um, uh, like you say, and it wasn't, it's just, um, he's, he's, he had actually been out of WWE for almost as a, as a day-to-day active performer and wrestler or even a manager for over, over 20, like well before since I started watching for sure. But, you know, he's one of those guys that kind of continue to live the gimmick, as you would say, right? And, um, and for someone his age, like either to himself or obviously partly probably to his management team, you know, knew how to kind of use social media to his advantage and, um, you know, would lift, would continue to kind of lift through the gimmick to his uh, Twitter posts, right? Like you, you would, you would see like posts of him kind of, you know, making fun of Hulk Hogan still or like other, you know, calling other wrestlers in the current day jabronis and things like that. So definitely someone who knew how to stay in the limelight and um, um, how to kind of connect with the younger audience as well. Cause you don't see heels like that these days. Part of it obviously too, um, the restrictions of political correctness, right? But it's just people don't have that skill as much anymore as they used to. I'll tell you, the closest one I could think of was a guy we mentioned last week, and it was Gunther. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Iron Sheik paves the way for a Gunther-type character as far as he comes out and, you know, as far as bringing the whole country and culture element to it. And, you know, uh, we respect the mat where I'm from. Here in America, you don't. So I think Gunther owns uh, OZR and Sheik a big thank you, certainly for helping develop his character. Yeah, yeah. I think like Gunther kind of is like a, you know, um, a chip off the old block. You would say Iron Sheik, um, Bruno Sammartino, right? One of like guys like that that kind of haven't been seen in a while. So it's, it's good. It's good to kind of um, look into that. But I guess um, yeah, I just we have to pay you know, tribute to the Sheik because it's an icon lost. Um, and yeah, we continue on. And one icon lost, one continues. I were... Uh, nostalgic rick flair shirt today <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah Ooh, okay yeah that that's um that's obviously going in line with you know you wore that shirt and you know i think um it lines with um charlotte coming back just in time to get a title shot jumping the line <laughs> i don't you know what uh, as long as goldberg doesn't come back it's fine yeah. <laughs> charlotte wants to come back yeah she's gonna come in she hasn't wrestled but she goes to the front of the line i don't get it but uh We'll have plenty of chances to talk about her. I recently uh, picked up tickets uh, for Forbidden Door for AEW. That's a big event being held in Toronto this year. That I think it's nearly sold out, actually. It's a big event. The other AEW event's not selling as well, but got there. SmackDown is coming to Toronto uh, in the summer, and I still got to pick up my tickets for SummerSlam in August in, in Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. Oh. <laughs> I will be there, guaranteed. It's going to be a fun event. SummerSlams are always good. One of the bigger pay-per-views. You know, there's there's decent pay per views and there's big pay per views. I count SummerSlam as like a tier. Like you got you got WrestleMania is the echelon one, then mm-hmm. the Rumble, and SummerSlam. Those are you know two A two B for me. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I mean, I guess when you kind of talk pay per views, like there's the big four, right? 
So obviously at WrestleMania is WrestleMania, like not the kind of just, you know, like the, the Super Bowls, the kind of NBA Finals, Champions League, World, World Cup, whatever you want to call it. It's that it's basically, I mean, there's no off season in wrestling, as we know, that like it goes on every week. But I guess WrestleMania is kind of what it culminates to and then supposed to be kind of, of a soft restart after that, right? But, um, you know, Royal Rumble kind of is what starts the road to WrestleMania. And as obviously, like that's my personally my favorite pay-per-view just because of the Rumble match itself. Right, nothing beats a rumble match, right? Absolutely. Like if I could pick between um one, I mean if I could only pick one paper, yeah, I would pick the rumble royal rumble just because of the rumble match. Um, but yeah, SummerSlam and Survivor series, those are their other kind of big um quarterly pay-per-views, right? And there have been years where SummerSlam has kind of um been better than WrestleMania certain years, right? So it's definitely like if if you can't go to a WrestleMania, then SummerSlam is not a bad option to go to. Even Survivor Series is not what it used to be. I mean, when I think yeah. of Survivor Series, it's back in the day when The Undertaker first got uh, mm -hmm. launched and uh, he was in the Million Dollar Team. You know, you had the whole team concept. And now it's it's still, I mean, it was pretty decent with the cages and all that. I get it, the War Games type effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, give me a Rumble match any day of the week. Right. I'm with you a thousand percent. Now, as we're taping today's episode, it's on a Tuesday that we're taping it. And I'm going to watch... Uh, NXT for the first time in eons. Uh, mm -hmm. I follow it, but I, I, you know, I keep it with the volume off while I'm like walking the dog and cooking and doing everything else, but watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, I truthfully, after they called up a lot of the superstars over to WWE and Raw and SmackDown brands, uh, it's pretty watered down right now. I mean, the fact is they have no women's tag team division at all. They still got a women's division somewhat. Um, uh, they still got their champion, Braun Breaker, still hanging out over there, although he's bringing Seth Rollins over. So it was interesting. I changed courses on today's topic, Timur, because uh, it made me think, you know, I read an interesting article and it got me thinking, NXT, I think the way they're evolving it, the way it looks like, the TV deal's up soon. This is no longer going to be a developmental league. They're going for a third brand. That's it. And I think that's a very, very smart course for them. Because at the end of the day, you have all these wrestlers hanging around, they're doing nothing. Send some of them down to NXT, you know, and let's get some ratings going. Baron's over there. Mustafa, not Mustafa, but Mustafa is over there. <laughs> and you know what? Let's recycle the guys. I'm for it. I think it's pretty good TV. Uh, what's your thinking as far as the whole NXT thing? Do you think it should be more of a developmental brand or do you like the idea of it being a third solid brand? So I... Um... I guess developmental is maybe now like um, the wrong word to use based on how successful it was up to maybe up to maybe a year and a half ago. Basically before they did that restart of NXT 2.0 as they called it, right? Before that, like if you kind of go back to maybe basically when the Shield guys were kind of there, right? From that period on till maybe, yeah, 2020, NXT like it, they call it developmental, but it was probably better than the other two shows uh, at, at that point, right? Like it used to be called, like if someone got called from NXT to the main roster instead of a promotion, it used to be called, oh, they got demoted to the main roster because you know when they came up, their character would just get destroyed, right? Um, very few far in between, like a guy like Roman Reigns or, you know, a couple of other guys that kind of fit Vince McMahon's mold of a wrestler would get pushed. Everyone else who were fan favorites in NXT would just not get a fair shake on the main roster, right? But so at that point, it was, I think at that point, they should have used it as a third brand because it was actually probably the best product they had. Um, now, in the last two years or so, it, it's, it is required for them to use it as developmental because the guys they've, they currently have and the guys they've brought up, most of them in the last two years, are not up to par for the main roster side. If you're just looking at the NXT guys, right? Um, unfortunately, um, there's a lot of people on the main roster that just can't find a spot. Right. So uh, I know Dolph Ziggler, like last year was sent back for a little bit and, and he can't do anything on the main roster, but you know, that run he had kind of to bring Braun Breaker along, like worked, right. Uh, it, it served its purpose. It worked wonders for Mandy Rose. Like she was a champion for almost one year. Right. Um, How's she doing both, by the way? Yeah. I, I don't know how she's doing now, but, but regardless, like the purpose they had for her in NXT worked, like she was a champion for almost one year. Um, they've, now they've sent back Baron Corbin and you know, he's only been there for a couple of weeks, but you're already noticing when he's on NXT versus when he's on the main roster, it's just a whole different, he, he just seems like that old, you know, Baron Corbin that was kind of, had potential, right? The lone wolf character. And the reason for that is because 
when you see him competing against the people in NXT versus the people in on the main roster, like he's my, like as bad as we as we see him compared to the main roster, he's still miles ahead of most people in NXT, right? So it's kind of I'm looking at it as like I wouldn't call it the, like the word developmental, I guess can't be anymore, but you can kind of say it's minor leagues, as in like that happens in other sports, right? Like in baseball, like Alec Manoa, for example. I, I mean, I think he can definitely do with a stint in, in the minor leagues for the Blue Jays right now, right? And that way you're kind of getting a two, two, two in one deal where someone who's maybe not um, kind of maybe is in a rut on the main level goes back down, competes against people, against people that are not at their level. It gives them a little bit of confidence as well because they kind of see themselves doing better against those people. And the people that are in, in the minor or developmental system that aren't as good, they they only get better by competing against someone from the main roster, right? So I, I think right now, maybe for the next couple of months, they should kind of treat it as a hybrid system where it is that third brand where you bring people like Baron Corbin, Mustafa Ali, Dolph Ziggler, you know, uh, I think- Apollo Crews. Exactly, right? Any any uh, Anyone that's kind of being lost in the shuffle on the main roster, they can kind of get reju- a rejuvenation in their career by going to NXT and, you know, coming back and, and the NXT uh, competitors get the benefit of learning some from someone who's been on the main roster, picking up, you know, you just notice that, you know, that person has that connection with the crowd. They know how to kind of um, switch things on the fly. They just have that extra hop to them that you, you, you just notice it, right? Like it just speed gets better for, for, for the most part, right? Speed and charisma just gets better on each level. So Baron Corbin was looking like a star. Uh, taught, I think who was he competing against last week um, in NXT? It's the, I think it's the, it's the. He's not even a manager. Trick player. Williams. Trick Williams. Trick Williams. Yeah. Right. And Trick Williams. Trick and ain't easy. Yeah, yeah, Trick and ain't easy. So obviously now Carmelo Hayes, he he's an exception to the rule that we're talking about next. Like he's built for the main roster. He can come tomorrow and he'll be fine. Right. But that's that's a guy kind of few and fine, but we know the main roster. But someone like Trick Williams who you notice, you know, is not there in terms of like, he's athletic, but his ring work is not there to the level of the main roster, right? Um, him working against someone like Baron Corbin, that will help him, right? Whereas if he was competing against someone on the same level as NXT, you're only going to get to a certain level uh, if you're not competing against uh, top-notch competition. Like you just made me think of, for example, the dawn of NXT, you know, and mm. I love the dawn. I love the character, the family, that stuff works on NXT. But he comes to WWE and they don't build him up the same way and they don't give him the same kind of room for creativity. He's just going to be another dude hanging around there, like Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes was awesome in NXT. They got vignettes. He was feuding with the Million Dollar Man. They really built him up. He had ring gear. Now he comes to WWE. He's got no ring gear. He's just hanging out. He's Cameron Grimes. Nobody knows who he is. No purpose. He's going to be jobbing in no time. Like, you know, they're just wasting these guys away. There was... Look, the way I see it, Timur, it's like NXT, it was at its peak when they were looking more for indie guys and, and mm-hmm. the indie guys that were not getting a chance and then helping elevate their game and then bring them to WWE versus this whole college thing where they're trying to bring professional athletes that have nothing to do with wrestling, develop them, and then bring them up to the roster. I feel like where I'm seeing this now, I think that there's like, we need and yet a we need a fourth brand. We need to go back to a full minor league system where let them develop these guys from college and never wrestled before. I don't want to see them. I don't want to hear from them. Bring the indie guys and gals to NXT. Let's develop them. Let's bring up, you know, the Baileys of this world and uh, anybody, Charlotte Flair, like, you know, anybody that is a real wrestler and, you know, is, is primed. I like that idea. And then the developmental league, the fourth league, if they're doing really well, then bring them to NXT, then bring them. So I think they're actually missing a part. And there's actually, I think it's, it's there's so many people that are just going to fall through the cracks at the end of the day, unfortunately. If you're trying to develop indie, guy, indie guys and gals, plus trying to bring up uh, uh, developmental people that have never wrestled before, there's just going to be too many bodies around. As it is now in WWE and SmackDown, there's just too many bodies around and nothing to do with them. And then it feels like, you know, they bring up these people from NXT. It's like new toys to play with. So let's put our new toys out immediately. What happened to all the other people we're seeing week to week? They're just sitting in the back doing nothing, I guess, getting paid, you know? And uh, one of the one of the examples I was going to give today was the whole women's tag team divisions now. Mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to understand this. So we got three brands, and we're going to have a unification match between the NXT champions 
who are on SmackDown, which is Isla Dawn and Alba Fire versus Shayna Baszler um, and Ronda Rousey. And then they're going to come. So there's going to be one set of women's belts for three brands. Does that make any sense to you? Because I'm not getting this at all. Yeah, that's completely um, out of left field for me too, right? I mean, it makes sense if they want to have uh, one set of women's tag team championship between Raw and SmackDown if because they don't have enough women for both rosters. But right now, I think the deepest roster in terms of um, um, number of uh, competitive uh, wrestlers are for women is in NXT, right? Like uh, that's where they can legitimately probably have like four or five, at least four or five good teams. So uh, I think this kind of maybe does align with the point you were mentioning earlier, right? Where they're kind of going to maybe start seeing the third brand now. I mean, Seth Rollins is supposedly going there like later this week to compete, right? So if you're, if you're supposedly your world champion is uh, going to NXT to compete against Braun Brecker, um, I think it is going to become more common that we see main roster uh, talent going to NXT a lot. And we see Shayna and Ronda Rousey defending titles there and then defying titles of SmackDown. I, I, I do see them winning, by the way, right? Just right. I don't see um, Isla Dawn and um, what's her Hellfire. name? Yeah, I don't see the two of them beating Baszler and Rousey, at least at this point, right? So it's, I guess it's it's a way to kind of, I, I'm hoping it's a way, and knowing WWE, they'll definitely mess this up, right? But I, like I, I'm I'm hoping that this is a way to kind of, you know, have a little bit of mystique and surprise where the chance can show up anywhere to defend any time, right? Um, kind of like what Baron, Cor- Baron Corbin's doing right now. He's on NXT, he's on SmackDown, because he's a free agent, right? So sure. he's on like all brands. Right, so anyone can show up anywhere. That kind of, because they did a brand split has only been like what a month, right? And already it's already been. But I'm so confused because the SmackDown Women's Champion is on Raw and the Raw Women's Champion is on SmackDown, and you call up the top NXT Women's uh, Champions of all time, Katana Chance and whatever the heck her name Mm, is, Carter, 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 yeah, Carter, and guess what? They get squashed by Baszler and uh, Ronda Rousey. Now, yeah. I like the whole Abba Fire, Isla Dawn. I think they're awesome in every possible way. I think they had a great buildup. They had a great vignettes. They had everything going in NXT. They come now. They're not playing up their witch characters at all. They're just kind of like, ha, 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 and then mm-hmm. they're doing nothing. I agree. I think they're going to get squashed. What's the point of bringing them up? Like, if you're going to bring them up, have them be the champions, and let's do this thing. But to bring them up to squash them... There was no point. They might as well just left them down there. Yeah. And like, look at Gallus, for example. I don't know if you watch Gallus on NXT, yeah. but those guys are solid. They are badass yeah. and they are strong. I'm loving them as champions. They have a set of belts there. Keep the NXT uh, tag team championships intact for the men. That's cool. And then, and, you know, pretty deadly called, called up at some time, point. Gallus is going to get called up. At some point, you have to split up the tag team belts. There's no point in having Zinn Owens walking around with two sets of belts. Mm -hmm. Split them up. Let's have Raw tag team champions, SmackDown tag team champions, NXT tag team champions. This gives more belts, more things to play around with. I mean, we already split up the heavyweight belt. I mean, Mm -hmm. we got Roman Reigns. I think now with one belt looks like. Yeah. Right? Seth Rollins has his belt. Let's just have the fine belts. Otherwise, these brand splits, everything is confusing the heck out of me. Guys coming back and forth. Unless this is going to be the thing now, then what was the point of the draft? Yeah, I they, just I think why it's, even done, it's already done. The draft is already done because unless let's see, unless they're still in that transition phase where they're trying to set the championships, right? But it's just um, yeah, I, I do and like I think who's who's even challenging KO and um, Sammy? I think there's going to be a gauntlet match later this. Um, Another speaker, gauntlet yeah, yeah. match. Yeah, that's, I think that's what happened on SmackDown. Oh, right, week, right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Right, to see who's going to challenge them. But that should be to split. I, I'm hoping whoever wins that, um, it is for, you know, one of the one of the belts, not both. And Because, yeah, you do need to split it. It just doesn't make sense to have two uh, two belts on, on one, one team. Guther and Kaiser put up such a good match on Raw the other night. And that was they were they were a classic tag team as far as uh, because Vinci was injured. They... Mm-hmm. Out, they outshined uh, Owens and uh, and Zayn by far. I would have loved to see just given Gun- Gunther another set of belts. It's fine because I love watching the guy. But we got to make a decision in life here. I got your solution. Are you ready, Timur? This is how I'm going to approach it. Okay. Let's do it like in soccer. So Raw is the upper echelon. That's the main league, and then and then League B is going to be SmackDown, 
and then NXT is the third league. If you win enough matches in NXT, you get called up to SmackDown. You win enough matches, you get called up to Raw. But if you're losing X amount, you can get called down at any time. And I, I'm okay if we do this, and let's have the fine rosters. But if you're on Raw, I don't want to see you on SmackDown or NXT and vice versa, mm-hmm. unless you're Baron Corbin. But uh, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, otherwise, we're all just kind of confused of what's happening here and who's got what belt. And uh, like Braun Breaker going in, like Braun Breaker is not going to beat Seth Rollins, obviously. It's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. I guess it's going to build some excitement having Seth Rollins back there. If you're going to do the match in NXT, great. But on the same token, what is the point of this? Because you're not elevating Braun Breaker's career at all. Like you're stalling the guy. What is the point? Like what is the point of having him lose to a WWE person in NXT? This is your next big thing. Why don't we just get Scott Steiner in there, get him managing him. He's got to start squashing some people and let's get building some momentum. I, I I just feel like they're trying to kill Braun Breaker's career as a result. Yeah, I just, it, I, 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 they should have just called him up by now. I don't know what, what he's doing, right? Especially if he lost already to, to Carmelo again, right? But just uh, bringing up to the main roster. I think the, the point you have about the tier system, <laughs> the, the one thing that throws a wrench in there is that um, Roman Reigns only works SmackDown. It doesn't work Raw. And him being the A champ right now, that that's that's I think that's part of the negotiate renegotiation TV deal. Um, so which which network is Raw on again? Is it Raw? Uh, on Fox. Fox or SmackDown on Fox. Yeah, Raw's on for Fox. Now. And, yeah, SmackDown's Smackdown, on Fox. SmackDown. They're both on Fox. Oh, okay. Oh no, no I, I think I, no. I think Raw's on USA. Raw's on USA and, yeah, and SmackDown's yeah, on Fox. Yeah, yeah SmackDown's on Fox. So we're yeah, in so, Canada, folks. So we don't yeah, know what the heck's yeah. going on. Everything's yeah. on our weird channels. Yeah, we have some weird channels. But I think part of the negotiations was um that um, USA wanted uh, Roman Reigns to come to Raw. And uh, he's like, well, I only work Friday, so I'm staying where I am. Um, At the end of the day, yeah. look, we have our two champions now. The guy you're going to see, like I told you, is going to be Solo. Solo is going to mm-hmm. beat him. And we'll talk about that next week. That's the only way yeah. you're going to deal with this whole Roman Reigns fiasco. But clearly, uh, the one thing, the last thing I'm going to leave you with, Timur, is this concept. You want ready for my idea of a utopian wrestling mm-hmm. fantasy? Mm-hmm. every day we should have wrestling so oh, okay. monday night raw i'm good with tuesday night nxt wednesday dynamite mm-hmm. bring smackdown back to thursdays thursdays are great fridays we're busy we're driving to the cottage we're going wherever we're going we're going out to the bar i don't know but we ain't watching smackdown so let's move mm-hmm. smackdown back to thursday so we can enjoy some good old th- thursday then we can have back-to-back aw nights so Rampage, if somebody could please tell me what channel it's on because I can't figure it out because I flip on my channels and it says that I have a thousand channels on my uh, subscription and I still don't see Rampage anywhere. Apparently I have to go online for it or something. I don't know. And now there's Saturday Night Collision, which yeah. is basically the CM Punk. Nobody will wrestle with him on Dynamite. So they had to create a new show <laughs> yeah, for yeah. him. So we got Collision on Saturdays and then Sundays, I don't know, maybe bring back main event, but instead of uh, main event, just bring like jobber matches, like the way you what what, what we have. Uh, there used to be WWE 365 or what was it called? Sunday Night Heat. Sunday Night Heat, sure. Yeah. <laughs> bring back Sunday Night Heat, call it Sunday main event. I don't know, but even if you take Sunday off, we have yeah. the possibility. And apparently, everything is open season. So when the TV contracts are up, there's no commitment that SmackDown has to stay on Fridays. I think Thursday was a better slot. Yeah. But uh, the dream of having live wrestling every single day of the week may be happening. Yeah. No, I I grew up on SmackDown Thursdays. That you know I never liked it on Tuesdays, Fridays. Like I've never barely would ever watch it on a Friday to see all other things going on. But like, Thursday is like the perfect day, and you know that's 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 what SmackDown kind of thrived on that Thursday show. On UPN back in the day. Yeah. Nikon, you're watching uh, Spike TV. This yeah. is where we got to be. Maybe not Spike yeah. TV, but Thursdays is back. We'll be back next week, folks. We're going to be talking about the bloodline yet again because the storyline is giving me a headache and we got to figure mm-hmm. out what's going on with the, with the bloodline once and for all. Please send in your comments. Let us know what you think of NXT, any of the WWE brands, AW, what you think as far as TV schedule, as far as where we're going with developmental leagues. We'd love to hear your comments and we'll see you next week on Professional Wrestling, the podcast.